one of the agents told us they wish we would have just pulled He's off. Like, I on wish them. you guys would have just. Left. I'm like, pull off? You got guns all around here. Who, are you crazy? Who does who that? Who does that? And one guy was like, "She's taking a van. You guys are never getting your van back." In order to be in Mexico, um, you have to get this thing on your van called the TIP. It's just like, and I feel like our van is being held ransom for ransom, but we don't even have an amount. At least give us a direction, like, okay, well, talk to this person, or this is how much you have to pay, right. or something, something. Something. No one is doing anything to, to help, to assist, to guide, like, nothing. <sighs> okay, so, um, I guess we are finally ready to talk about it. I think so, maybe. Um, it feels weird. It feels weird talking about this again after reliving it. Okay, so we're going to tell you guys how the van was confiscated by Mexican authorities. It has taken us about a week to actually talk about it because it's so fresh and it's so hard and yeah it's, um it's just a difficult situation to constantly uh keep thinking about it and then having to i guess relive it every time someone asks us i want to i want to start off by saying thank you guys for the messages thank you for the donations thank you for the prayers We've seen them all. We've read them all. We haven't responded to many of them because it's difficult. Yeah, we haven't responded to a lot of them. Um, I don't know. It's like every time I think about it, every time I try to formulate a sentence to talk to somebody about it, I just get so emotional because, I mean, you guys know that. It took a lot to uh, get that van together. It took a lot. And, uh, yeah, to think that we could possibly lose it forever is just, um, it's devastating. So, anyway, what happened? We, we left Tulum April 1st. Our rent was, uh, we were no longer going to stay in Tulum and we left. And uh, we were advised not to take the same road that we took when we drove in because uh, that road was full of narcos and it's a really bad route. So we decided to take uh, another route, which was bringing us towards uh, Mexico City, more towards the, the inside of the country instead of the coast. So that, that's how we started our journey. So the day started off wonderful. We said goodbye to uh, Luca and Perla. We had, um, he offered us wine that morning. We, uh, we talked to him, we told him that we'll be back, blah, blah, blah got into the van it was it was fine we drove for about four hours. four hours that day and uh we stopped off at this place where um we were able to charge up and spend the night because uh you know it was getting dark and it was like it was a nice it wasn't even a campsite they just uh it was it was a nice opening area with a pool and a restaurant and they let us plug in we ate i mean it it was fine we got up the next morning we uh prepared for our day and we hit the road. I think we were like an hour and a half into our trip before we were stopped. So we were going to, uh, I mean, like Faustino said, we were advised not to take the same route that we took coming up. And if you guys know then, well, if you guys have been watching our channel, then you know that on the way to Mexico, like we had a lot of problems. We had problems with the gas. We had problems with being stopped. We had problems with the roads. So we met some amazing people in Tulum. And one of those, uh, the persons that we had met had told us, you guys definitely took the wrong way. Do not take that way back. That way is extremely dangerous. You know, you'll be stopped. If you wasn't stopped the first time, you're definitely gonna get stopped going back. You know, I've heard, he's told us that he had heard so many stories of, you know, people being kidnapped and, you know, things just being stolen because of that route, the route that we took coming. So we decided that, okay, well, we're not gonna take that route going. We're gonna take a, a different route. Now, let me back it up. In order to be in 
Mexico. Um, you have to get this thing on your van called the TIP. So it's like a temporary import paper that you have to get. We didn't have to get it when we were in Baja because Baja is considered a safe zone. If we would have stayed in Quantana Ru, then we didn't need the tip because we were in the safe zone. But by us taking the opposite way to get home, it kind of took us out of the safe zone. So we had a dilemma. It was either go on the same route that we had taken. Which they said was dangerous. Which they said was complete. I mean, and these are people that yeah, are live. from Mexico. And one of these guys was like a lawyer. Yeah, And, he, and uh, he spoke to, you know, he had clients that took that route and, you know, they got in trouble or, you know, they were stopped by narcos. the narcos yeah, or the cartel or whatever. So it's either take that way and risk, you know, getting our lives taken or our van taken or take the other way, which we thought was much safer. So we took the other way. We were an hour into our trip and we were stopped by a duna. I think a duna, that's... which is like customs. Um, and yeah. there's basically like a big customs border agent in like a facility inside, I guess about the middle of the country. It's where... the middle yeah. of the country. country. We were hours away from where we had started. We were hours away from where we were going. <laughs> And um, we happened to take that route. So yeah. we, we were stopped and the customs agent asked us for, our you know, our, our papers. And we, you know, tried to explain to them why we didn't have it, safe zone. We were told not to come this way, blah, blah, blah. Now, we had read some articles that there was another family that had gotten stopped outside the safe zone. And the, customer, uh, the customs agent just turned them around, told them to go to another border and get the paper, way. but you can't come this way. Right. So, I mean, discretion is something that could have been used, but um, the, the manager was called and then the manager's boss was called to try and figure out like how they were gonna take care of our situation. And it wasn't long before the manager, which was a lady, said that, uh, she was just gonna take the van. She's like, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. We're gonna take the van. One guy was like, she's taking the van. You guys are never getting your van back. And you know, it's gonna be, if you do get it back, you're gonna pay at least $10,000 to get it back. And, and they kind of stick us, uh, uh, today has 10 been G's. absolutely horrible. We're at the border and we can't get home. We took the van. That's where it all started. So we stopped there. It was, I want to say, 1130 in, in the morning. morning. By the time they finished with uh, paperwork their paperwork and, and everything, it was about 7, 730. Seven at night. Yeah. yeah, so here we are, stuck in the middle of the country. We didn't have a ride. The next city was like two, two and a half hours. hours away. We didn't have a ride there. We didn't have our van. We had Gypsy. We were told to get everything out of the van that we could hold. It was a good thing that we had book sacks because we uh, were able to pack some things. Yeah, if, if had we not had the book sacks, these small little travel packs that we pack, uh, we travel with, I don't know how we would have carried what we carried out of there. And we were able to grab a couple of articles. We, we grabbed all our vlogging equipment some food for gypsy and, and you know we grabbed just enough thinking we were going to be able to come back like we we're going to go pay this fine pay this fee uh and then we'll be back tomorrow because that's what we're thinking yep. like some of the agents that were out there there was some that were trying to be helpful and some that you know just that they were doing their job so uh the guys that was talking to us it was like you know it, it it's not going to be an overnight thing it's probably going to take some time you know you guys aren't going to be here tomorrow but you know maybe in a few days we That's we it. were while we were sitting there on the side of the i guess it's the checkpoint we're sitting there on the side of the checkpoint and they just they left us with a gypsy and two backpacks and a bag and and we we're telling them how uh well how do we get back how do we get to the nearest town so they're like, well, there are some buses, buses that come and maybe you guys can get a ride with, uh, with the buses. But the buses that were passing as we were sitting there, like they all were packed. And keep in mind, like we still have Gypsy and Gypsy is no small dog. And these vans, these buses, they're small little local buses that just drive through transporting people. They don't really take dogs. So the customs agent basically had to, I guess, and tell them, hey, these people are stranded. Um, they need your help. 
and uh, they have a dog. So eventually someone stopped and uh, allowed us to get on and we were inside of a small little van. We got the last two seats in the back. Gypsy sat on the floor. And we went two hours from the customs to Villa Hermosa, which is like the nearest town that had uh, anything that we needed because right. we didn't have a vehicle so in order to try and get the process started like we needed a vehicle so we needed to be in a city that was big enough for us to rent a vehicle and there were a couple of small cities that were about an hour away from where we were stopped but those cities didn't have car rental car rental places no. so that's why we had to go two hours the opposite way so we got there to Via Hermosa and uh, we were told we were One told by somebody that was sitting on the bus that it was like 100 pesos for us to um, that was the fee 100 pesos per person. per person. So Faustino paid him. And when we got off the bus, he's like, oh, I didn't tell y'all it's uh, 300 pesos for the dog and 100 pesos per for person. the two of you per Right. So, so $15. So we had to go ahead and, and pay it clearly because you know, he had just given us a ride. We didn't want any more drama. And he dropped us off in the middle of the city. Now, the middle of the city is super busy. I mean, there's cars and taxis, trains just everywhere, but no one wants to take a dog. So we were about 20 minutes from our hotel. And it's about 8.30, 9.30 at night at this time. So we just decided walk. to walk, which is not the safest thing to do, but that was That's the only thing. Yeah. That was the only thing that we could do. So we decided to start walking toward our hotel. And uh, while we were walking, we were able to flag down a guy who uh, let us in with the gypsy. And we got to a hotel that we had paid for Already, on the phone. Yeah. But when we got there, they looked at gypsy and they're like, oh, well, we thought the dog was smaller. And because she's the size that she is, she won't be able to stay because we only allow dogs that are like under 15 pounds or something. It was small dogs. They would put them in like a little storage room. So we uh, we weren't able to check in after they already took the reservation money that we were able to book. Um, so basically we we're walking around. I think we walked around like three more blocks. We had to ask them for where we can find a hotel that allowed dogs. We walked around the area for about three blocks, went to, uh, I might have been to Hilton or the Ramada, but eventually we found this place called Fiesta Inn, and they allow dogs. Um, but what they don't tell you is that they charge an extra fee for allowing a dog. And it's not even the fee, because we kind of expected to pay the fee. We just didn't expect to pay the amount of the fee. So if it was $100 for us to stay in a room, it was $100 for Gypsy to stay in a room as well. So already it's getting, ex getting it's expensive. expensive. So uh, we ended up staying there because clearly that was the only place that we could stay. Okay, so finally left immigration without the van. Um, we have to get a ride to, well, we had to get a ride. We were already here and uh, via Hermosa. We had to find a, um, a dog. Well, a hotel that allows dogs, because we made a reservation at one hotel when we were sitting at immigration, but uh, when we got there, they said Gypsy was too big and our reservation was canceled. So we had to walk around the corner and we came to this other hotel that accepts uh, dogs. They're just a little bit more expensive. It's already like 10. The rental car place opens up, I want to say, for 8 o'clock in the morning. And we have to drive, we're going to have to drive all the way from uh, from where we are now, from Villa Hermosa to Guatemala. We have to go to Guatemala uh, border office and try and see if we can get the paper that we need. This has been a day. And I have anybody to blame but myself, but I was in this situation. God has mercy on us. Cause we, yeah. This is where my faith is gonna have to kick in. So maybe it's 10, 30, yeah. 11 o'clock at night now. We try to get a, a couple hours of sleep and we got up the next morning. 
finally found a rental car that was um that was nearby it was a local spot called green motion yeah and they came and picked us up at the hotel and um we drove well we got in the car and we attempted to get the paperwork that we needed again like the tip because we figured if we have the tip then we can give them to we can give it to them and then they can yes. give us our van back so we drove from where we were which, which was, was in Via Hermosa, Hermosa to the border of Guatemala which is El Sable which is a four hour drive so we picked up our car rental about 9 30 9 something like that and we took a four hour drive south to Guatemala with all the paperwork they were giving us and we had to go down to customs uh, at the Guatemalan uh, checkpoint and we had to explain to them how you know we didn't pay uh, the temporary uh, inspection permit to enter the vehicle and then we just wanted to pay it now you know, stamp the paperwork, backdate it, and let's get it back. And unfortunately, that customs office was not able to help us. Um, the van had to be there for them to take pictures of the van entering Mexico, um, which is different from when you're coming in through Texas, maybe because it's so busy and they don't have time for that. But the Guatemala border was very empty and they tried to help because we, we got help from some National Guard. Uh, that's the people that run the uh, customs. We got help from a couple of different people, but at the end, they really couldn't do anything. And they told us to go basically back to where you came from and go to the headquarters, which was now eight hours away and try to straighten this out. Um, so we probably left around Guatemala around noon and drove back four hours to the nearest town, which was uh, it started getting dark, so now we had to stop in this other town called Palenque, which was uh, it's a famous town in Mexico. It's about two hours south of Villa Hermosa, so we were able to stop there and spend the night. Uh, we spent the night, got up the next morning at about 5 o'clock, and uh, hit the road. So the next morning, we're driving about an hour. And two, two and a two, half it was actually, yeah, it was actually towards the end of the route. It was like two and a half. We we're almost arriving to where we needed to be. And one hour out before arrival, we get a text message from our Airbnb saying we left something. I uh, looked at my phone again and I saw like a wad, like a stack of money. money. We left the money three hours Behind. away. Yeah, the, the opposite way of anything that we had to do right. or any place that we had to go. But we needed this money because, I mean... That's how we were going to try to pay people or get this to stuff To do done, whatever anything. we needed to a, do. Yeah, it was about 300 and... It was six, almost $400. It was almost $400. $360. Yeah, it was almost 400 And we left it. But now we have to go back. back. We have to go back and we have to get the money. There isn't like, okay, well, we'll just leave it and keep going. Or can they send it to us? We don't bank down here. <laughs> it was... It was a mess. It, it, it was so a mess. we ended up having to drive back three hours. Um, they they had our money. We were extremely grateful. You know, told them about what was going on. They didn't want like a reward or no. whatever. And I, we were like I said, we were extremely grateful. Yes. So we get back on the road. We make it to uh, the town where Customs Headquarters is located, and it's in Paraíso, Mexico, which is nowhere. It's four hours away from the van. Um, so we get there and we try to have, we try to get into the building, but we're not allowed in the building because you have to have access to enter the building. And in order to have access to enter the building, we have to email, like tonight, and so many documents just to enter the building, not to get our van back, but just to enter this federal building. To we find had, out what's going right, on. We had to turn in passports, driver's license, insurance, make and model of the car rental we were using. It Social was, security, right. this, that, and uh, the other. And it just wasn't like, okay, well, you guys just turn this paperwork in and you know you'll be good. They have a specific order and a specific way and a spreadsheet Format. in which they want it. Like they want this in JPEG and they want this and in PDF. PDF and they want this in. And if you don't do it exactly the way that they say 
then you, you're constantly getting rejected. Like, no, you guys can't get back here now because it's not like this. And then we send a paperwork and it's not correct. And, and it's they don't like, reply back to tell you it's wrong. And it's they just not, sit on it. It's not like they're not being helpful. They're not being clear and concise on the, the way that they want it because we'll send it the way that they say. And then once you know they receive it, then something's wrong with it. So at this point, it kind of feels like a game is being played where... Like I told you guys, we only have a certain amount of time to get the van. So if we're constantly sending our paperwork in and no one is answering the phone and no one is checking the paperwork, no one is responding to our emails, at this point we kind of feel like they're deliberately not answering the phones and not responding because they want the time to pass. Because if you don't claim your van or do whatever you have to do to your vehicle within a certain amount of time, then they have the right to, to auction yeah. it off. Um, so it's now... We're in this town, it's about lunchtime. We're definitely not getting access uh, to this federal building to enter just to talk. Um, we're like, we're just, it's already Friday. They're not open on the weekends. Uh, and we just can't keep shelling out money that we don't have. We to can't cover keep spending hotels, money or the rental rentals, or the dog fee right. or the food or Anything. the. I yeah. mean, everything is, it's like, it's a nightmare and it's, Every time we turn around, like we're constantly a, getting a, 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 a gut punch. Yeah. Okay. I can't. So we, we finally make it to we finally make it to Parisio, and we're trying to find a lawyer at this point because we aren't able to get in touch with nobody. the authorities. They're not responding to us. They're you know no longer trying to help. So we figured that we'll get a lawyer. We. At the same time that we're looking for a lawyer, we're also looking for a vet because we're trying now we're trying to out. get home. I mean, we're trying to find, like Faustino said, we're trying to find a way home by any means necessary. The rental company wanted like another $500 to drive from the middle of the country one way all the way up to Texas. And they wanted like 400 some pesos. Uh, it was Not like, pesos, it, it was dollars. It was, a, it was per mile. So we're like, well, we can't take this car because once we get to the border, we are we have no car. We'd have to walk across the border and get another rental. So we're it's still, just, it's yeah. Just more, we're trying to we're, find we're, ways home and it, nothing's working. We're still in the town of Parisio and um, we're now focused on getting Gypsy her paperwork so that she can be cleared to fly and you know we can try to put some of this nightmare behind us so we we finally make it to the town and we're looking for a vet we're looking for a vet we can't find a None. vet anywhere so we're just randomly driving down the street and faustino sees something that says adoptions pet adoptions and i'm like well it says pet adoptions you know they might be a vet they might not so he walk in he tells the people that you know we need papers for gypsy and you know whatever and they're like okay well you know just get a shot record Bring it here. He came, ran out. He got the shot record because that was one of the things that we grabbed out the van before oh, yes. we got out of the van. So he got a shot record. He got everything. She uh, actually was in need of a shot. So they gave her a shot. They uh, told us to come back in like an hour and they would have everything, you know, taken Situated care of for and us. And that was about, they, they fixed all the paperwork for about 800 pesos. Um, I think that's like $60 or something like that, uh, $50. So we, yeah, so basically they, they they told us, come back in an hour. We're like, okay, let's go. We got Gypsy back in the car, and we're like, well, let's go get this money. We drove about 40 minutes away from the vet before we realized we didn't get an address to the vet. We don't know where we don't it's know at. Where. We, just, we just happened to have lucked up on it. Right. So We turned around another 40 minutes, and now we're driving. We're trying to, through memory, drive back through this Mexico. It's a big city. Drive through the same route we just took trying to find that building that had the vet. And sure enough, after about maybe 10 minutes of driving, after already driving the 40 minutes to turn around, we find the vet. Uh, as soon as we walk in, uh, I, we get their information. And so happened, uh, it had already been an hour. And the guy had told us that, you know, it'll, it'll take an hour to do the paperwork. So when we come back in and say, oh my God, we, we don't even have your address. How do we get back? And then the guy was like, well, luckily the guy's wrapping up. Um, about 10 minutes uh, as we're sitting there, the guy, the vet down the street uh, was helping him with the paperwork. He comes walking in and says, oh, here's your uh, documentation so Gypsy can fly. And we're like, oh, my God, thank you. And during the same time, um, the vet had a secretary that I so happened to ask him, hey, do you know a lawyer in town because we need help? And sure enough, 
her brother is a lawyer, so she calls him, and he shows up 10 minutes later, and we explain what happened, what's going on, and give him copies of paperwork that we had to get, make, we had to make copies next door. He says he can help, and, um, He's like, we're not going to, I'm just going to look at the paperwork. I'm going to figure out, you know, what's going on. I'm not going to charge you guys for looking at the paperwork. I'm not going to charge you for trying to figure it out. I'll just, As you know, yeah, I'll just let you know what they're expecting. And then we'll see how we can get you guys out of the situation. So we, uh, we made copy, handed it to him. We, we thanked everybody, hugged everyone and we were done. We, uh, this might have been uh, about three, four o'clock. We hit the road to our, well, our next plan was to like, well, there's nothing we can do here. It's Friday. This place closes for the weekend. We just have to get to the nearest airport, which was Mexico City, which was about 12 hours away. Uh, we decided to drive at least four hours. Two of it was darkness and two of it was uh, daytime. And uh, so we made it about 10 to 8 hours away from Mexico City, and we stopped in, uh, I don't even know what town this was. Uh, we stopped in some town, uh, spent the night. Oh, Coatzacoles. Uh, co uh, it's, it's on the coast. Um, from there, we spent the night, um, and then once again, 5 o'clock in the morning, we hit the road, driving from Coatzacoles all the way to Mexico City to catch the nearest airport and and so we get to mexico city and mexico city is, is huge and i mean there we've never been to mexico right. city before so and we were told like stories about mexico city like when you guys get there you're gonna get lost you know there's just so many people and of course you know we didn't believe that so when we got when we got there we just all of a sudden just became engulfed in this big city with cars and people and trains and dogs Everything. and I mean just it is so busy so we're driving we're we finally uh make it like to the city close enough to get to the airport and we as we're going to the airport we're three blocks from the airport we get pulled over by the police Two and the them. police is like um you guys ran a stop sign no not a stop a sign stop a, a red a stop light, light or and whatever and this car is not supposed to be driven on certain days here in mexico city because the I mean, here in mexico city because the license plate has like a odd number on it or whatever and he was like well it's going to be 8000 pesos 4000 pesos per for, ticket for your tickets or whatever but you can pay one of the tickets here and just give me the 4,000 pesos. So y'all already know, you know, what that was. It was, it was a shakedown. It was a shakedown. That's what it was. So, you know, we're like, we don't have 4,000 pesos. Like we're on our way to the airport. He's like, so y'all don't have any dollars? Nothing. <laughs> like, no, we we've been, we've been in Mexico since like November. No, we don't have, since December, we don't have any dollars. He's like, okay, well just give me what you got. And I, I'm grateful that when he stopped us, like we had money in the glove box and that was all the money that we the had, money that we the money that, that we had. Yeah. And we had been spending that like on the toll, booths are toll like $15. or on the vet or on. So it had been dwindling down, but it still was some money. So I'm thankful that I thought to take the money as he was stopping us. I reached into the glove box. I got the money. I put it in my pocket. So when he was like, so you guys don't have any money, I'm opening the glove box and I'm like, look, it's empty. We don't have anything. And he was like, so just give me what you got. So I reached in my pocket and was able to pull off one of the, the bills. And I went to give that to him and he's like, no, 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 put it down. So he reaches his hand inside in of the, the car, car turns his hand sideways and like, here, just put it here so nobody else can see. At this point, I didn't care. He was letting us go. I knew that we were getting shook down. I mean, our luck was already in the toilet. So we're just trying to make it like it's like we're trying to make it to the to the finish line. And, and every time we try to make it like we get punched. clipped yeah. or and it's like we're so close, but something is pulling us back like to stay here. And it's crazy. So we, we finally make it uh, to the airport. We get there. We give them Gypsy's paperwork and they're like, OK, well, you know, she's free to fly. I mean, she's OK to fly. 
Now, this was before we bought the ticket because we wanted to make sure that we went to the airline to show them all the Gypsy's documentation. Just to make sure because our we, flight was early, like 6 o'clock in the morning. Right. So what we didn't want to happen was us to buy get to the airport, buy the ticket, and then once we get there, they're like, she oh, well, fly. you can go, but your dog right. can't go. So clearly we didn't want any situations like that. So I'm like, Faustino, please just like get their name. If they're saying that it's okay for us to fly today, they may have someone there tomorrow because our luck is not the best right now. They may have, you know, somebody there tomorrow saying that Gypsy needs something else. So we went back to the counter and they're like, no, you know, she can fly, blah, blah, blah. All she needs is a muzzle. So we tried to find a muzzle in this city of chaos. We were... Uh, it was not the... We no. were unable. Let's just say we were unable it, to find a muzzle. Went back to the airport and there just so happened to be... A store. Like a dog store, it, a store that sold dog stuff. So we got the muzzle from there. We got her okay to fly. We um, realized that because there was another thing going on with the... Rent okay. It had to be started, so. So, so there was another thing going on with the rental car. We called the rental car place just to make sure they would be open when uh, it was time for us to drop it off. And we got three different. Yeah, they're answers. like they close for two. They close for seven. They're twenty four hours. You it guys are yeah. So we had to go there to the actual car rental and pull up and be like, "What are your hours?" Because we have a six a.m. and we know that most car rental places either twenty four hours or open at nine. So we pull up to the car rental place and the guy's like, oh, we closed at 8 p.m. We're like, oh, my God, because if not, we we're going to have to stay an extra day. Just so we can drop the car off the night prior. the car place didn't open until 9, but our flight was for 6. So we would have had to stay another day if they, in didn't, fact, closed right. early or whatever. Found out that wasn't the case. We uh, found the hotel that was directly across from the airport and they had a shuttle that was able to get us uh, to the airport at like four o'clock in the morning. So anyway, we dropped the car off. This was Friday night or Saturday morning. I, I want to say, child, at that point, I, I was so delirious we, and just- It was bad. Emotionally um, and physically drained. I don't know what day it was, what time. I just know that we were moving closer to possibly going home. So we finally uh, dropped the car off. He brought us back to the hotel. We slept for a couple hours, and then we got up to catch At the about flight. about four in the morning, the, uh, we caught the little uh, the bang, shuttle. the shuttle from the hotel to the airport. Uh, we get there at 6 a.m. Everything's fine. Gypsy, uh, we board. Everything's running. We're like, oh, my God, you know, we're, we're leaving. This is great. All we have to do is we're flying into Houston, actually. Because That's the plan. The flights were cheaper, and I believe this was either Sunday or Monday, um, we fly into Houston, and we're like, okay, we, we just arrived into Houston. It was Monday because it was the day before the eclipse, and I think the eclipse was Tuesday. So we fly into Houston. Uh, we're like, all right, it's 9 a.m. This was the first day, sorry, but this was the first day that we woke up and things actually looked good. We actually slept. Like it, it looked like a regular day for us because, I mean, we don't usually have... Bad, crazy things that happen. That like happen that. to us like this. So... The day that we woke up and, you know, got on the plane, Gypsy was able to fly. She did perfect. It was only a two-hour two hour flight, flight, but she did perfect. She flew on the plane with us. She didn't make any noise. We're like, yeah, this is great. The plane lands. We get to Avis, not Avis. Uh, Alamo. Alamo, because that's where we booked the rental car with. We get to Alamo. They're like, okay, you know, uh, just put your credit card in because you guys know that if you're renting a car, you need a major credit card. So we put the credit card in and she's it's like, yeah, we got the card. Just fine. It's time to pay for it. You guys go pick it up. We swipe the credit card and it says blocked. And we're like, why is right. the credit card blocked? This is weird. Like, this is a card that we never use. We, you know, just put it away for the side for Emergency. situations like this. So we, we call because... We know that there's money on the car, like there's an available amount on the car that we could use because we never use it. Like, we, we're responsible. So anyway, uh, we call and they're like, oh, the credit card that you have in your hand has been canceled since last December so, or whatever. And we sent another card out to you. So the card that you have physically, it can't be used. Now, even though like the expiration date is like the 27, you know, year 27 or whatever, 
They're like, no, you guys can't, you can't use this. What you can do is you can wait for another card. I'm like, no, but we're, we're trying to, yeah, this is not the city, the state that we live in. Like we're stranded. We need help. And she's like, well, you know, uh, you have another card, but that's not the one that you have in your hand. So the other card that we had at was home. at home. Right. So we have no credit card. Oh, my God. All we have is debit cards. And you know how car rental companies are. You, you can't rent with a debit. And if you do rent with a debit, you need like nine, eight hundred. You need like extra money. For and it deposit. wasn't. And it's not thing. about that. It was just that they also have other rules. One company, uh, you needed to be a resident of Texas. Another company was like they had no one way. So we're like, what's the problem? The problem is that everyone was flying into Houston, renting cars to drive to see the Eclipse. Yeah. So, so no cars were available. The one there was one six uh, car rental that did finally they saw a scrambling walking around asking, and, and this place is crowded. They're like, we have a car. Eight hundred dollars for one day. To so one day to drive a car from Houston to New Orleans. And it wasn't a luxury car. No, it was it was a, a it was a regular old Kia. Oh, yeah. For eight hundred dollars a day. And I'm like, well what is the problem? What is going on to like the eclipse? Yeah. Everyone's coming at the time for an eclipse. Uh this is insane. Yeah, so clearly we um we couldn't get that car. So we we sat there at the airport trying to find out, you know, what we're gonna do, whatever. Nothing worked. So we ended up um we ended up actually we going ended to up getting a hotel to... room. Oh, I was gonna... So okay. you know, yeah, we we ended up getting a hotel room. So we were able to get the shuttle to bring us uh, back from the car rental place to the airport, and then get the hotel shuttle to pick us up from the airport and bring us to the hotel. So we get to the hotel. The first thing we do is we hop in the shower because clearly it's we've had a hard day, day. and. Uh, we we jump in the shower. As soon as we get out the shower, the phone rings in the hotel room. And I'm like, that's weird. You know, we just got in no here. No one knows we're here. So I'm messing with Faustino because at this point, we have to laugh to keep from crying. So I said something like, oh, Call they're going to, uh, they're calling you about the dog. Knowing that, it was I, dog I friendly. thought I knew that the hotel was dog friendly because I, you know, I looked up. From this ordeal, that's one thing that you have to remember, that if you're going to rent or you're with a dog and you want a room, that you have to make sure that the hotel is dog friendly. So that's exactly what I did. So Faustino picks up the phone and he's uh, some, the guy is on the phone, the manager well, from downstairs. Well, when I answered, there was a lady, but they must have switched over when I handed when it you to switched you. Over. There was a lady that called and I'm like, dog, but you said you're dog friendly. And I, I'm like, Faustino, like, just tell, deal. I'm like, Faustino, just tell them that, you know, Gypsy is a service dog and blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, take the phone. So I, I get the phone and when I get the phone, there's a guy on the phone and he's like, uh, yeah, this is not a, a hotel that accepts dogs. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't accept dogs? Like it's on the website. He's like, I don't know. I mean, giving me nothing but attitude. He's like, I don't know who told you this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, can somebody come and pick her up? And he must have thought I needed him to call somebody because he's like, well, why would, I, why would I pick your dog up or why would I? So anyway, he's like, well, it's not our job to make sure that your dog has somewhere to go. So I just lose it. I lost it on the phone because I know that we've been taking too many hits as it is. I know that this dog, I mean, this hotel is dog friendly. Faustino is like, I don't want to be involved. I'm just going to take our stuff and we're just going to go downstairs. And I'm like, no, we just can't give up. Like this is, I know that the hotel is dog friendly. So I stay upstairs. He goes downstairs with Gypsy in our bags. They go outside. I stay upstairs and I'm looking through the phone and I get the picture of uh, the website where it's strictly, it says dog friendly. Wingate so by Wyndham. So I go downstairs and I realized the person that I was talking on the phone with, and I'm like, oh, so you must have been the guy on the phone. I show him the phone. He's like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, and blah, 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 and this is that, and I just let him have it. And I know that, you know, that probably wasn't the best thing to do, but at this point, I am just so full of anger. And he was the, the first person. person to get it. And he's like, you know, I apologize and, you know, you guys can stay here. And then I went outside and grabbed Faustino and Gypsy and we went back upstairs. 
So we're still stuck in Houston at the end of the day. Like, we're still stuck. Yeah. So I ended up, um, my mom called, and she's like, I can come and pick you up. Like, I'll just rent a car. You know, I'll drive the five hours, and I can come and pick you up. So checkout is at 11. So you guys know that Faustino was in the, the military. So we're thinking, okay, well, we can go into the military lounge the USO. at 11 and just wait the five hours because checkout is at 11. They're not going to get here until about two or four or whatever. So we can just go in there. And then I thought about it. USO is on the other side of security and we don't have a boarding pass. So to we can't get. go. So we have nowhere to go. Basically go back to the same rental car pickup in Houston and just sit there for four hours and uh and we just sit there and and uh everyone, and of course it's eclipse day airport's empty the car rental area is empty nobody wants a car everyone's coming in and we're just sitting there for four hours yeah we got the hotel shuttle to bring us back to the airport the airport shuttle brought us back to the car rental place where we sat for four and a half hours until my mom and my sister called and told us that they were 30 minutes away then we got on the airport, airport shuttle yeah. back to the airport, waited a good 10 or 15 minutes. My mom and my sister came. I'm they, so grateful for them. I think they pulled. They made good timing. It's usually a five-hour drive. They must have did it in four. Uh, we got in a car at about maybe it might have been 4.35 p.m. And I drove back five hours and we made it to New Orleans at about... It might have been 10.30 p.m., 11 p.m. Uh, Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, and from there, we have been trying to catch up on our sleep because it's it been has bad. been, it's been horrible. Um, and we have been trying to take care of the van and the lawyers and the authorities from this side of and, the earth. Oh, and yeah. Which has been... Hard. It's been hard. The uh, they're they're basically getting, when we call the attorney, he's getting them the same documents we sent, and they're just slow. They're they don't know. I don't, they're, they're not they're, at this point. They're not even answering the phone. Yeah. Like our attorney told us that he had to contact the manager or the boss of the lady who we're supposed to be talking to because she's no longer answering the phone. The entire time we were in Mexico. Calling from the Mexican number, she pick up. Every time we call, she would pick up. Since we've been back home, it's it's a struggle. She does not pick up. She does not respond to messages. She does. It's just like, and I feel like our van is being held ransom for ransom, but we don't even have an amount. You know, it's it's crazy because we only have a certain amount of time to get our van back, and no one is answering the phone. We've tried to call everywhere. Yeah, I've called, called, called WDSU, which is a local news station. They gave me the number to a state representative. I call him. He suggests that we call the embassy from this side. Now, I, the whole time we were in Mexico, I'd been on the phone with the embassy. The embassy is hung up in my face. They told us that it it's wasn't an emergency. emergency, that they can't do anything. Like, I'm not expecting them to just save come and us. save us. We like, we understand that, you know, if we wouldn't have went the other way out of the free zone, then, you know, it wouldn't have happened. Okay, well, that was our fault because we wanted to be safe. So that's why we went that way. But at least give us a direction like, okay, well, talk to this person or this is how much you have to pay right. or something, something. Something. No one is doing anything to, to help, to assist, to guide, like nothing. Legal advice, like a notary on their side, you know, just something like tonight I said, something just to point us in the right direction, not, not to save us or to give us Because that's not even or, what we're no, looking we for. We're not looking to be saved. We, we want to help ourselves. That's why we're on the phone and we're making so many calls and we're doing so many things and we're trying to contact so many different agencies because we want to know what is it that we have to do right you know it's our situation let us try to get out of it but at least try to point us in the right direction yeah. of which way to go and yeah and and there was a couple of times when we were pulled over at customs like some of the agents were trying to help they were like one of the agents told us they wish we would have just pulled He's off. Like, I on wish them. you guys would have just left. I'm like, pull off? You got guns all around here. Who, Are you crazy? Who does who that? Who does that? Who like, pulls off with 
weapons all around and you're and asking we, us for paperwork. And we really didn't think that it would be that serious. Like that. I think you more, know? the more people that kept walking to the van and getting involved, it's kind of hard for, to them to like, all right, just go ahead. But like tonight I said, the manager got involved and another person got involved. The more people that got involved standing around what's going on, it's kind of hard to like bend the rules and, and let us go by. Because we've read, like I said, and we've read that they, they usually just let you go by and, and you just deal with it later. Because you're going to have to eventually leave the country and you got to show that. But at least you're at the border where you can probably pay. But uh, it, it's been an ordeal. We've had different people from the border agents have told us that it could, it could be $10,000. One of them said that you have 10 days to claim that the vehicle is yours. Because right now they don't know who the vehicle's for since... It's just a vehicle that we're driving to Mexico. They could consider it, you stole it from Mexico. Um, so basically we have to show proof to the to customs that this is our van via registration, titles, and things like that. And they were just giving us so much different advice that you just don't know where to turn to. You just don't know where to go and what to do. So uh, we got here and we started a, uh, a GoFundMe. GoFundMe. And um, that's why we wanted to say thank you for the donations. It seems like every time we get like a, a notification that someone has donated, it just touches me so and much. I starts crying every time we get because we know that you don't have to do that. Um, and especially during these times that are hard uh, on everybody. But every little bit helps to try to get our van back. And as of now, we've been we've been here for about, I think, five, six days. And we just kind of like... We haven't really been doing much and just trying to like stay healthy ourselves and and try to figure this out. Um, I don't I don't know what to say. Uh, it's it's been an ordeal and we're just trying to make this day by day and hopefully we'll get a call. I'll get we'll get a call the lawyer and he'll say, hey, you owe this much and you need to come down and pay for this cash and and we'll have it back. So hopefully within the next. Hopefully soon we'll, we'll, we'll get that call where we have to fly back to Mexico City, rent a car, pay these fines and penalties and, and drive our van back. Uh, yeah, that's what we're that's hoping. What we're hoping. That's what for. we're hoping. So um, if you got, we're going to put the link to our GoFundMe because we don't know, like we were told 10000 but right. we, don't know, we don't know like how much it's going to be. So if you guys can help. And at all, even if it's not money, like even if it's like, oh, you know, I know this person who knows a person who might be able to, or if it's just sharing the story so that more people won't go through the same thing we did or sharing the story so that, you know, somebody who knows how to help us can possibly see it, you know, yeah, that um, really, really goes a long way. And we really appreciate you guys that have been sharing the story <laughs> and have been checking in on us. I just haven't been able to formulate any words because um, it, it, yeah. it, it's hard. We're not, if, if you've known us, <clears throat> we've been doing this for quite a while and we're not usually the kind to we set don't up go, we anything. don't ask for money or GoFundMe's or things like that. It's, it's even, we've thought about uh, doing Patreon, but it's hard for us. I guess it's just in who we are. It's hard to ask people for money when, when we know things are, times are tough and we're we're not those kind of people. like that but i think this time it's real it's really hit home and and i don't i don't i don't know how, i don't know how we're gonna pull this one off but it has to be done yeah so uh that's all i have in me you guys i um i am extremely hurt by uh, everything that has taken place and this process has been excruciatingly painful and uh, I just hope that it comes to an end soon. And I hope that end is with us driving off into the sunset in our van, you know. And uh, yeah, so if you can help at all, you know, like with, with any uh, prayers or any donations to our GoFundMe or any advice on, you know, who we could reach out to or who we could possibly talk to, then we would definitely appreciate that. I don't know. Uh, it, it's very... Chip, I'm okay. sorry. She just shook the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very, uh, it's very emotional, and it's kind of hard to, I guess, live life or vlog about other things when you have this going on. It's hard to attend 
any other events to want to show you guys festivals or, I don't or know, anything anybody we're, we're, worried about that or not it's just it's very difficult i don't know how what we're going to move on from this i just well, i just hope we're able to our next story will be driving to mexico and showing you guys getting the van back I'm not driving to Mexico. Well, you know I, what I mean? fly to We're Mexico, Mexico. Cause, baby, I'm not driving to Mexico. They could have it. <laughs> we had so many great things to say about Mexico, and we were even contemplating getting uh, property there and this, this, that, and the other. It's left a bad taste. But um, y'all ain't got to worry about me. <laughs> y'all don't have to worry about me no more. Just give me my van back. That's it. That, that's it. Um, no, but uh, that's it, y'all. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated on uh, the van situation. Just uh, pray for us, y'all, because we need all, all the help that uh, yeah. that we can get. And so, please, uh, please subscribe and hit that like button. That that definitely helps us out a lot. It helps us grow our channel so we can get the van back. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. I look a mess, but that's how I feel, and. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, until uh, until we have some more information. Deuces.